Welcome everyone to Get Them Singing and Moving Songs and Games for Upper Elementary. My name is Kurt Sareski and um, I have been a music educator since 1992 and have had many a journey in my life and struggles to find material that really works well and inspires our upper elementary children to continue to participate in the way that they did when they were in kindergarten, first grade and second grade. Third grade's still like a good time, but sometimes you get to fourth, fifth grade and those kids suddenly become different children. Um, but with that, let's learn some new music. Let me show you some ways in which you can do these and then also provide you some examples, video examples, so that since we can't be together, and experience this, holding hands, moving together, doing clapping games, um, we will share it this way. So um, the first song comes from um, Tobago. Uh, it's a Tobago clapping game. And uh, it's really, really easy. I learned it from Susan Brumfield, but then I, I rediscovered it in the publication of uh, Brown Girl in the Ring. And, um, Early on, it has uh, the same language and everything like this. I think it was brought there, but then it caught on over in um, um, Trinidad and then taken over to Tobago and really caught on over there. And this is how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one and twenty, two and twenty, three and four and five and six and twenty, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, one and thirty, two and thirty, three and four and five and six and thirty, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine. 41, and you get the idea, all the way to 100. Now, it's a clapping game, and the clapping game is essentially you patch on your leg, you clap, and you pat your partner's hands. And that is all on the three, four measures, and on the two measures, it's just patch, clap, and then you start over again on those, which makes it a little interesting um, as they learn it. But it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one and twenty, two and twenty, three and four and five and six and twenty, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty-one and thirty-two and thirty-three and four, five, six and thirty, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. 39, 41 and 40, 2 and 43 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 40, 47, 48, 49, 51, and so, et cetera, like that. So why don't you try to sing along with me on your own, pretend that I'm the person that you clap with, if you will. Let me see if I can adjust my camera. Not that you have to see me patching my legs, but makes a little bit um, helper do that. So we start one, two, three, down, clap, up, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one and twenty, two and twenty, three and four and five and six and twenty, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. 31 and 32 and 30, 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 30, 37, 38, 39, 40, etc. So you get the idea of it. It's just getting used to when to go down, clap, and then back down again. I'm like that. Now, the game is essentially that you are in a circle facing your partner. And um, you're doing it with your partner. There is one odd man out. The odd man out goes over and steals someone's spot. You step in, they go out, they continue to steal. Throughout the whole song, they do this until the very end. And you don't want to be left, left as the person out at the very end when they get to 100 at the very end. 
So if we could play our first video, I'd just like to show you how this is um, uh, performed. This is a group of teachers that gathered for the West Texas CODA Initiative. If you notice, they are stealing the parts. The lady in the blues taking the lady in yellow. Notice how they speed up. Please turn your microphone back up. Thank you. Um, so very easy song and really accessible and fun for the kids to do. Okay, um, bingo. We all know the song and love the song and probably grew up singing, there was a farm who had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O. B-I-N-G-O and bingo was his name Oh, Well, it had its roots in England and it was called Bobby Bingo. You see the text underneath, just switches out with his name was Bobby Bingo in there. And it's a fun way to teach um, multiple things. Obviously when I learned it, we would get to I-N-G-O, I-N-G-O, I-N-G-O and bingo was his name Oh, Eventually N-G-O. NGO, NGO, and bingo was his name. Oh, so the game that's played over in England and has now come over here to the United States, it's kind of fun, is a fun way to teach inner hearing and also to teach the grand right and left. Um, so, what you have to imagine is that you have uh, the kids in the circle or people in a circle, and they take hands and they walk to the left singing. There was a farmer who had a dog and uh, his name was Bobby Bingo. And they stop. And then on the B-I-N-G-O, it's a little bit more complicated. They clap front on B, they clap back on I, and then they clap front, snap, clap for N-G-O. So it's B-I-N-G-O. Do that with me. Here we go. Let's clap front, back. N G O again B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. So let's sing the whole song. Pretend you're walking. <laughs> Here we go. There was a farm who had a dog and his name was Bobby Bingo. B I N G O. B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O, his name was Bobby Bingo. So that's the basic structure. You could literally just do that because the next time you would go, I-N-G-O, 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 his name was Bobby Bingo. Then N-G-O, N-G-O. So you're just doing the hand clapping part of it until the very end. Down the road, as they get really, really good at this, you can introduce the grand right and left. And basically what happens is, is his name was Bobby Bingo, and I am facing my partner. And we basically are gonna take right hands and go B, and then pull yourself by when you're doing that. But I would teach them first where you go, shake right, left, right, left, 
And then on O, it's a high five. So they're going to go B I N G O to a new partner. So imagine this, and we'll see a video in a second. You're going to pull by, you're going to go B I N G new partner O on that. And then you start again on a there was a farmer who had a dog, his name was Bobby Bingo. I-N-G-O, 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 his name was Bobby Bingo. B, walking by, I-N-G-O. At the end, then you have a new partner, and you do it again. This is something that takes layers. Never try to teach something like this in one day. <laughs> um, but if you would please show the video for Bobby Bingo. So a, a new fun way, if you've never done it, it's great. The kids love it. And honestly, it's a fantastic way to teach grand, right, and left because it doesn't go along with any of the other type of dance moves that we have to try to throw into there. Um, all right. This next song, Sipolinji, uh, comes from Uganda in um, a specific part of Uganda called Buganda. And the language is called Luganda. So it's Uganda, Buganda, Luganda, according to what my friend Bronco says. Um, I collected this from my a dear friend, Bronco Sakalekwega, um, who came to Texas Tech to study and get a PhD. And he is over in Uganda and he taught this to me. I had a sound bite of him, but um, I didn't get loaded up. I apologize, but this is how it goes. Twacha tulimbutsi. Kati to gunjutse, bati chimwe bale, oku to so me sa. Sipolinji, sipolinji, my father, lumberi, simila, simila, kechi. So, in, um, do me a favor and repeat after me. Just look at the words on the screen. I'm going to use those. All the vowels. If you have an A, it's an A, and uh, a U is an U, an I is an E. So it's very, um, uh, uh, it's an im, I should say. Um, so, twa ja tu lim boot si. Twa ja tu lim boot si. Ka ti tu gun jut se. Ka ti tu gun jut se. Ba ti chemwe ba le. Ba ti chemwe ba le. 
Oku to so me sa. Oku to so me sa. And it goes, si polenji, si polenji. Si polenji, si polenji. My father, lumberi. My father, lumberi. Simila, simila, keichi. Simila, simila, keichi. So now, look over here. And um, if you want to try to sing with me, go ahead, but I'll just sing through. I'd like to get into your ear a little bit. Repeat after me. Twa cha tulim bootsi. Twa cha tulim bootsi. Kati tugun jutse. Kati tugun jutse. Bati chumwe bale. Bati chumwe bale. Oku tu so me sa. Oku tu so me sa. Si polenji, si polenji, my father lumberi. Si polenji, si polenji, my father lumberi. Simala, simala, kehichi. Simala, simala, kehichi. So um, I never got a video of us actually playing this game. It was just one that I would learn and we would do. Um, and I would teach it to people and I never gathered it. And I, I actually um, contacted Bronco and said, do you have any video? And he said, I don't, but let me see if I can make some. And, um, uh, and he, he couldn't get any kids together. Um, they were on a break and they were doing something. So um, I apologize for that. But essentially, you can play the game like this. I'll tell you one way you can play it and then I'll tell you how they play it over in Uganda. One way is to play the traditional way that you play with um, London Bridges Falling Down where you have an arch, kids go under, and then when you get to, um, so they're walking under, under, they're going through, and then on sa, you've caught some. And then you just do this. And then, if you don't know the, um, the London Bridge game, the partners who have the bridge have chosen two different things, such as um, pepperoni pizza or um, Hawaiian pizza. And um, you would say to the person, would you like pepperoni pizza or Hawaiian pizza? And then they would say, ooh, Hawaiian pizza. And that, if it, I was Hawaiian pizza, then that child takes my spot and I go behind and we start creating lines, which at the very end, we have a human tug of war. Now, the way they do it, it's the same human tug of war, but over in, in Africa, um, the word music is all encompassing. It means dance, it means singing, it means playing intru instruments over there. Rarely do they do one without the other. And so um, what the kids do is there's a group of them, at least 10 off to the side. And on the first part, they're just kind of jamming out and dancing over there because that's what they do. It's it, it's from when they're born, they're singing, they're dancing, they're playing instruments. So it's, they're over there going, twa tulim bootsi. I'm not going to dance because that would just embarrass me some more. But, and the partners over off to the side have chosen something. And he, he gave the example, he said, um, they would say, um, meat or rice? Because over there, both of them are, are, are wanted commodities. You know, you don't get a lot of them. And so while they're dancing over the, there, these two are just swinging their arms singing the song, and when they get to Oku to so me sa, one of the kids runs over and slips under the arms. So he's in the middle. You do what I did. Si polenji, si polenji, ma fada lumberi, simila, simila, keichi. And then they say that, do you want rice or do you want meat? Oh, I want rice. So they would go to the person who had rice, and they start creating that tug of war. They start over, and they do that. So um, we do that with London Bridge. We do that with some other games. Um, but I just thought this was such an accessible song. It's Yes. Is it going to take a little while to get it? It took me a little while. But I find kids get it like that. Because they learn phonetically. They learn from repeating us up there. I could have the words up there. But honestly, they can learn it by rote. And that's fine um, with it. So that is Sipo Linji. And if you ever, um, my information that's on there, if you ever want, um, when I get a video, because he says, I need to make a video of it, um, just feel free to email me. And if I get it, I will I will send it your way or I'll send you a link on YouTube. 
Um, I've been to Harlem, or some people know as Turn the Glasses Over. Another one that I've never video recorded, which um, I, I need, one thing that's taught me about COVID is that I should have made a lot more videos to be able to present to people and for kids to learn some things other ways. But what I like about this is that it's not that the melody is super challenging for the kids. It's the action and the activity, the play party that we do with it. Um, um, and no, Harlem does not have two A's in that first sentence. I am just now seeing this in my life. <laughs> but the song goes, I've been to Harlem, I've been to Dover, I've traveled this wide world all over, 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 three times over. Drink all you have to drink and turn your glasses over. Sailing east, sailing west, sailing over the ocean. You better watch out when the boat begins to rock or you lose your pal in the ocean. Lots of variants. People change up the words of they don't drink, you know, drink all you have to drink. They say drink all your lemonade and turn the glasses over because, you know, the obvious reasons in it. But what it is, is essentially you partners who have made a dove circle and they promenade around it. Um, if you ever want to learn how to teach promenade, hit me up and I will show you a great way with um, Old breast. Such a cool way to teach promenade, the easiest way I've ever taught it. But that being said, on this, they're walking around in promenade formation, which is take right hands and then left hand and you turn, you're walking like this and one's leading the other around. And they're just marching. I've been to Harlem, I've been to Dover. I've traveled this wide world all over. Now on that, the part I teach is called ring the rag. Their hands are crossed like this already. That's why it's kind of like you're ringing it. And the tricky part is, and this is why I do it with older kids, is that the partners have to in sync, take their hands like this. And sometimes I just lay it lightly like this. And oh, I'm gonna take my headset off. Because then they go over, over, only twice. That's the hardest thing to do in this whole song. So you have to carefully take time and teach that to them. Do you do it very easily? If someone's taller, they have to bend over for the most shorter person. Once you try this, you will learn it like that. The videos I found of this do not have it that way. Instead of crossing hands, their hands are like this and they lead it over like that, which um, works also. So um, I just wanna see, cause I think I have, ooh, I've been to Harlem. Wow, that's way down here. Um, if we could do uh, I the Harlem England one, I versus the kids one video. I go, I go, I go. So I have three. Um, not sure what happened, but that being said, you got an idea of how they went over and over, over three times over. They went twice. And then on sailing east, sailing west, they drop hands, inner circle reverses course and walks opposite direction while they would go around. So you're singing sailing east, sailing west, sailing over the ocean. You better watch out when the boat begins to rock or you lose your pal in the ocean and you stop. Outside circle stays where they are. Inside circle grabs the partner next to them. If there is no partner, they go find a partner. So the trick is outside circle does not do anything except walk around in a circle. The inside part of the circle gets it all over there. Um, okay. Uh, there are more videos that I have in the handout and I would invite you to look at them. And um, I will also provide another video down the road for you. Let's see. Um, okay, so this one just got out, got out of order. Um, over the river to feed my sheep. Now, the reason why I have this up here is it, in Louisiana, 
Um, a dear friend of mine named Lamar Robertson um, uh, taught me this song. And because I know the one that I'm going to teach you, Weevilly Week. Well, anything about Weevilly Week, there's so many different variants out there like this. And this is one I never heard before. But this one goes, over the river do feed my sheep, over the river do Charlie, over the river do feed my sheep to feed them well on barley, trampling down the Weevilly Week. Trampling down the barley, trampling down the weevilly wheat to bake a cake for Charlie. Charlie is a fine young man, Charlie is a dandy. Charlie loves to kiss the girls because it comes so handy. Now, I have a quick video of this I just want to share to show you the two different things of how concepts are the same, meaning the story behind everything of, of Charlie and weevilly wheat and all this other stuff, but the games are completely different. If we could do over the river. Okay, that's how we have to watch on that one. Um, so Weevilly Wheat is what I want to go to next. And this is the one that I learned a long time ago. And it's fun because you can get with partners on it. Um, you have groups of four. Um, let's do that. Get back to slides. There we go. And um, so this Weevilly Wheat, um, I'm just going to move myself up over here and make myself smaller. Okay, so this Weevilly Wheat um, comes from the same thing. And I have American play party because I have not found it out anywhere else. A lot of these have their roots in other countries, over in England and, and things like that, obviously, because they talk about Charlie and, and uh, we can get into a whole historical um, conversation about this. But a Weevilly Wheat, um, this is a fun one, and it goes, Don't want your weevilly wheat, don't want your barley. Take some flour in half an hour and bake a cake for Charlie. That's basically the verse. Then it gets to five times five is 25, five times six is 30, five times seven is 35, five times eight is 40. You want to blow your administration's mind away? Have them try to teach this, learn this song, and do the actions that I'm going to teach you and do multiplication problems in it. It's going to, it, it mind explodes. Um, so the main part is, don't want your weevilly wheat, don't want your barley, take some flour in half an hour and bake a cake for Charlie. Here we go, sing along with me. Don't want your weevilly wheat, don't want your barley, take some flour in half an hour and bake a cake for Charlie. Then, five times five is 25. Do this for me. And this is how I would teach your kid. Take my left hand and my right hand's gonna go on top. I'm gonna go, five times five is 25. Five times six is 30. Five times seven is 35. Five times eight is 40. And then on Weevilly Week, you have one, two, three, four people. I have a partner that has a partner per se. You face each other. You can put your hands in the center and just go like around a maypole thing. Or here in Texas, we have something called the Texas Star. And I can grab the other person's right hand like this. Their right hand grabs this person's right hand that, like this. 
and it creates this kind of square pattern because you've woven a box and you just walk around like that with it for the whole first part and then you turn to face each other you've counted off one two three four number one will start with their right hand and you're keeping the beat so it's right then right then right right then left 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 and you stack it on the beat then multiple ways to redo it you can start with the bottom hand coming up on top or you peel in reverse then you go left 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 right 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 and i'm the last person to take the right off on that like that lots of different ways all the while where you're going five times five is 25 five times six is 30 five times seven is 35 and five times eight is 40. practice it practice it but the fun part is i go continue on five times nine is 45 five times 10 is 50 five times 11 is 55 and five times 12 is 60. then i go six times six is 36 Six times seven is 42, six times eight is 48, and six times nine is 54, to make their brains think even harder. So many synapses firing in here. It's pretty awesome. Um, if you would play the first video of we Weevily Wheat. This is a, a, a family that are doing a Four version of this. Four people stand in a okay? circle. Join hands Not exactly and skip the way in a I do circle it. as you sing the first verse. First, eight counts to the left, then eight counts to the right. For the chorus, everyone drops hands. Keeping in time with the beat, each person, in turn, puts his or her right hand into the middle of the circle, forming a stack of hands, one hand at a time. Continuing with the beat, everyone puts in his or her left hand and adds it to the stack of hands. The motion then reverses as everyone, in turn, takes out his or her left hand around the circle, then the right hand. Okay, so you get the idea of how, how that can be done. Um, I've used it on so many occasions. I've used it at um, uh, PTA meetings, to demonstrations or whatever, and I try to get some parents to do it. It's always a winner and the kids love it. Um, now, the next few are just rounds, rounds that I just love and I teach it on so many different things. Um, we're not gonna, obviously we can't do it, but let me just give you an idea of what this is. I got this from a dear friend, um, Pamela Wade, who's from South Africa, and she learned it over there. I asked her more questions and that's all she remembers. <laughs> so I have no other source other than Pamela Wade, but it's called The Accident. And it goes like this. Send for the doctor, Nellie's fallen down and crocked her elbow and funny bone. A bus came along and knocked her. They'll come and fetch her, put her on a stretcher. She'll be all right overnight. Great when you have the round and the harmonies that happen in there. Um, uh, so give it a shot. The kids will lo love it. Um, you can talk about what crocked her means. 
Um, then the hippopotamus, oh my goodness. I can't say enough about how fun this one is. Um, I do it in choirs. I do it with kids' choirs, with middle school choirs, um, high school choirs. Uh, so you can do it with your fourth and fifth graders for sure. And it goes, the hip hippopotamus took a ride upon the bus and all the people said, ouch, you're squishing us. And so the round, obviously, where the one, two, three, and four are, the three and the four are apparently hidden on there. Uh, but you do it that, and they get really good at it. And so in the advanced choirs, I challenge them to do it a beat entrance every later. So it's just down the road, the hip, 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 the hip. all the way down. They love the challenge. And um, when you get to ouch, all you hear is, Ouch, 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 if it's done correctly. And then you get the final, you're squishing us. Great, great, great thing. I got this from um, Kodai Approach Book 4, Katinka uh, Daniels um, on that. Now, another one from Africa. Uh, my Pamela Way taught me this one too. And she gave it to me as Bombera. And this is exactly the word she got. Bumbera, Bumbera Estimera, Bumbera, Bumbera Estimera, na 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 So for years I taught this and um and then discovered hmm it's not actually Bumbera. That is a bunch of Americans or English speaking people who didn't understand how the African language worked. And they just said, oh, I think it's Bombera Estimera. When in re reality, it is Mombela. And it goes, Mombela, Mombela Westamela, Mombela, Mombela Westamela. And then there's other words that go in there and it's just easier for me to do the na 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 this has been such a winner and it's a stick passing game or a cup passing game, whatever you want. I do it with sticks and I take my stick and the kids are down here and you, on the first part, you're going, um, Bumbera, Bumbela Westamela, Bumbela, Bumbela Westamela, and tap it center. Then you're, since you're sitting in a circle, uh, everyone starts passing it on the beat of na 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 if you'd like a translation of this or the whole language that I, um, of what the, the na 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 part has in it, um, it's uh, Dr. Brumfield, Susan Brumfield did some more research on it after I shared this with her. And um, we found some uh, of the other words. Now, they, I did find a video of some people uh, over in Africa, um, um, and I don't remember if they're in Zimbabwe or not, but um, if we could play that one of Mombela, they're doing a cup thing passed on, but at least you get to see how um, it is played over there. Have you guys got it? You know that song? Some of you know it already. There's a trick now, right? So listen. So it's gonna go like this. Watch us for now so that you know what's happening. Just watch us for now. So. So on Wednesday it changes one. Okay, you got it. So the okay, you get the idea of that, of how, you know, songs evolve. If they're a real folk song and they weren't composed, 
they're going to evolve over time that they have that. And, and I love seeing that because it really showed me that this is a true folk song, but yet has evolved over time. And the action they did, and honestly, the actions and games that go with it, it's just what kids make up or, or what they do on the playground. Um, I only have a couple minutes left and I have so many more songs to show you. So let me do this. Um, Four White Horses. I love Four White Horses. I have video links on there for you. This one takes a while to teach, but it is a four person thing and it's where you're doing hand things. Four white horses on the river. And then you're doing, hey, 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 with your partner. Then you're switching back and forth with neighboring partners. And there's all sorts of layers that do it. This is a huge winner. And um, the directions are included in the handout that I gave you, but also, and again, this comes from the Virgin Islands and was collected in 1960. Um, there are many different word variants out there. They have that, but this is the one that she collected in 60. And, um, and, and the games are just a lot of layering fun for your older kids. Look at the videos that, uh, links that I have in your handout. Um, Pirate's Gold. I have this one on here because if you don't know Peg Like the Pirate, you need to learn Peg Like the Pirate. And it comes from, um, it was composed actually by this Judith Crean um, in 1989, Australia. And um, this version that she has is slightly different than how it's been taken over here in the United States. Uh, but I wanted to share this with you to show you that, yeah, it was an actual piece. She has Peg Leg, the pirate is feeling depressed. Someone has stolen his treasure chest. Who has the gold? Who has the gold? Um, I wish she had. Who is the person with the pirate's gold? So in the States here, somehow it turned into this. Peg leg, the pirate is feeling depressed. Someone has stolen his treasure chest. Who stole the gold? Who stole the gold? Someone has stolen the pirate's gold. And it's a hide and pass game. And if you get a piece of gold or something that you do, kids have it in their hand, one person's in the middle and they're passing it to the beat. And they go, peg leg, the pirate is feeling depressed. Everyone does the motion, so you never know who has it. Someone has stolen his treasure chest. Who stole the gold? Who stole the gold? Someone has stolen the pirate's gold. Hands behind their back, the person in the center opens their eyes and they have to guess who has the gold in there. And I use it with singing. Do you have my gold? Because I always want to encourage singing in my class versus do you have my gold? Do you have my gold? Could do it that way, but keep them singing. Keep them singing. Um, and then Tarzan the Monkey Man, I learned this as a kid. This is like, if you know, a qua qua de la Omar, qua qua qua. It's a BSing game where you're singing Tarzan the Monkey Man swinging from a rubber band. Swish, splash, take a breath. The color is what? And then they say a color red. And whoever has the beat to pass, they go R E D. And whoever is supposed to get the beat at the very end pulls their hand away in time or tries to catch the kid with the hand like that. Um, the, I have a link here because there is a ton of, I mean, I grew up singing this song. I'm like, I think I knew the words a little differently, a little racier. And um, <laughs> this playground jungle is a great site because, you know, music on the playground is a cultural thing for kids. And you know, kids, they're going to take words and they're going to say, Hey, I know this version of it. And um, you may be a little offended in here, but I wasn't going to actually click on it and show you, but you know, you take a look at that and get some ideas for that. Say, say a playmate, please look at the videos that I have in there. Um, we don't have type, time for it. Um, and, um, but that's a fun, fun hand clapping game where you're like, say, say a playmate, come out and play with me and bring your dollies three, climb up my apple tree, look in my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forevermore, one, two, three, four. And he had this hand clapping game like this, several different um, versions where people are doing it. Check out this Ambry McLean. She did a looping of it, and I just thought it was a fun little thing to add in there. And then, um, yeah, we don't have time for questions, but I see there is something over here. 
Um, anyway, I, this was a lot of stuff. I wish I could be there, you guys, to be able to get you into circles, do hand clapping games. Um, maybe one day I will get to Louisiana and I can share some of these in person and we can have fun and do it together. But use my email. Hit me up if you want to talk and you want to uh, zoom on something and me explain some stuff, perhaps things I didn't cover or if you want to review. Uh, but with that, thank you so much.